In Lesson 5.1, the natural logarithmic function, differentiation, we're actually going to review back to logarithms, which you should have learned back in Algebra 2. We're going to look specifically at logarithms with a base of e in this and the next lesson. So we'll begin by looking at some of the properties of logarithms. And from there, we'll do some practice problems, looking at graphs of logarithms and expanding and compacting uh, logarithms as well. After we do all this review, we'll go ahead and move into the calculus, where we're going to look at the derivative of the natural logarithm. It's surprising how easy this is actually going to be once we get to the formula. You'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, but all that being said, before we get to any calculus at all, let's go back and review some important things about logarithms. We'll begin with a few elementary properties. So let's run through these elementary properties of natural logarithms kind of quickly. Uh, this should all be review and anything that you would like proof on, uh, you can certainly find proof in an old Algebra 2 book or search on the internet. But if we want to look at the natural logarithm of 1, the natural log, just like any logarithm with an argument of 1, actually just equals 0. That's a very important point right there, 1 comma 0. And that will come to play uh, when we look at the graph of the natural log. We'll do that shortly. Uh, but let's move on. If we have the natural log of the product a times b, we can simply split that into the natural log of a plus the natural log of b. You can see these have almost the same properties as exponents do. Well, uh, this one right here, the natural log of a to some power of n, you can actually take that exponent and bring it down in front. And what we would end up with is n multiplied by the natural log of a. And finally, another one that looks like an exponent rule, the natural log of a divided by b is actually the natural log of a minus the natural log of b. So you can see that the uh, product and the quotient are, well, very similar, but exactly the opposite of each other, essentially. All right. Well, I did say that the natural log of 1 equaling 0 is an important point. Let me tell you one other important point. Uh, if we do the natural log of the value e. Now, we haven't really defined e yet, uh, but e is a value that's approximately equal to 2.731, and it represents exponential growth in a sense. And so if we do the natural log of e, what we're actually going to get is 1. Recall that the uh, natural log of a value is actually equal to the regular logarithm of that value with a base of e. And so you can see how the natural log of e would actually just give us 1. There's your quick and dirty little proof there. Anyway, let me go ahead and show you a graph of the natural log. There it is right there. And I want to make you aware of these two points, 1 comma 0, which is right here, and e comma 1, which is approximately right here. Those are very important points on the base level natural log. Now, of course, as we... Um, add scalar multiples to it and adjust the horizontal or vertical shifts or whatever the case, uh, these two points will change. Uh, but if I graph those two points and recognize my vertical asymptote at x equals 0, I should be able to graph the natural log under whatever conditions it gets transformed. Let me talk real quick about this vertical asymptote. The natural logarithm can never be negative. If we have the natural log of some negative value, that actually just does not exist. And that's why we have that vertical asymptote where x equals 0. So there you go, the graph of natural log. Now, that being done, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple examples. In examples A and B, we'll actually be graphing uh, some version of the natural log. So let's go ahead and look at those right now. So here in example A, we're given a uh, function involving the natural logarithm, and we need to graph this thing. Now, before we go graphing it, let's go ahead and talk about the domain real quick. Uh, the domain of this, if you take a look, we can ignore this 3. That's a uh, vertical shift, and we'll get to that in a moment. And we can ignore this negative 2. That's simply a multiplier, but we can ignore that for now. Just take a look at the natural log of x. If that's all we have, it's not log of x squared. It's not log of x plus 3, anything crazy like that. It's just natural log of x. And therefore, our domain is simply going to be uh, all the numbers for x that are positive. x is greater than 0. So there's our domain. Uh, let's see if that holds up as we go throughout this process. Now, 
here is the uh, original graph. This is the graph of just y equals natural log of x. We've already seen this graph. Uh, notice the two points, 1 comma 0 right there, uh, as well as e comma 1. So there we go. That's where we started. Now, because of the order of operations, we need to handle this negative 2 first. The negative 2 is a multiplier, and it's simply going to multiply all the y values. And that's going to give us this graph. And as you can see, our natural log has been flipped upside down, and it's kind of been uh, stretched a little in the uh, vertical direction there. A stretch factor of 2 and flipped. So there's our multiplied by negative 2. Look very carefully. You'll still see that we have the point 1 comma 0. Uh, because multiplying 0 by negative 2 didn't do anything. However, uh, where we once had e comma 1, now we have e comma negative 2. You can see that for yourself right there, and that makes a lot of sense. So now, let's take our uh, transformed natural log. Uh, again, this is y equals negative 2 natural log of x, and let's add 3 to it, and it will look like, there you go, that is y equals 3 minus 2 natural log of x. Uh, notice that that 1 comma 0 is now at 1 comma 3. It moved up 3. That makes sense. And where we had e comma negative 2, it's now moved up 3 as well. So it's actually back where it started, at e comma 1. So there you go. Uh, that's how we transform these things. Uh, worry about multiplying first and then adding or subtracting, whatever you have to do. Uh, you don't necessarily have to transform it the way that we've done here, feel free, for example, to just pick a couple points. Uh, we know that we usually have the point 1 comma 0. Well, let's go ahead and plug 1 into our natural log here, and what we'll get is 3. So we could have just started with that. And furthermore, e comma 1, uh, let's get rid of that. If we plug e in here for x, uh, we see that we'll have 3 minus 2, which is 1 again. So we could have gone about it that way, recognizing that there's still that vertical asymptote at x equals 0, and then you could have skipped the transformations and gone straight to the final graph. But sometimes the transformations are a very positive thing to look at. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and move on to example B. Well, example A was a fun process, so let's do it again with example B. This time we're trying to graph the natural logarithm of the absolute value of 4x. What does that mean in terms of the domain? Well, we already said before that uh, for our domain, we said previously that x had to be positive. But now that we're dealing with absolute values, it appears that x could be negative or positive. The absolute values uh, will simply take the magnitude uh, if it is negative. So there's really only one value that x cannot be. We can say that x is all real numbers, but x cannot be 0. Remember, the natural logarithm of 0 is a vertical asymptote. It doesn't really exist, so there we go. Now, we're going to step through this the way we did the last problem, by looking at the transformations. But before we do that, let's take a look at those two famous points, 0, 1, and e, 1. Rather, that should be 1, 0 and e, 1. So uh, these are for the natural logarithm of x. Let's say that I wanted to do the natural logarithm of 4x. What does that 4 do? Well, hopefully you learned about this back in Algebra 2 or Pre-Calc, that that 4 inside the function actually causes the entire function to come together, kind of compress uh, in its x values. And so instead of having 1, 0, what we'll actually have now is 1 fourth, 0. And rather than e, 1, this time we'll have e fourths comma 1. So that will drag the point in towards the y-axis a bit. Now for our last transformation, we're going to do the natural logarithm of the absolute value of 4x. Well, that's not going to make any real difference to these two points, uh, but it is also going to introduce their negatives, negative 1 fourth comma 0, and also negative e fourths comma 1. And uh, of course, that includes our original two points, the 1 fourth 0 and the e fourths one. So now we're actually going to have four key points that we can look at. All right, well, hopefully that made a lot of sense. But if not, let's go ahead and take a look at some transformations here. Once again, there is our original graph of y equals natural log of x. If I turn that x into a 4x, so I have the natural logarithm of 4x, 
watch how my graph is going to compress towards the y-axis. There it is. And uh, while you may say, oh, it looks like it got taller, don't think about it that way. What it actually did is compressed towards the y-axis. Now, if we make that the absolute value, uh, that, of course, is now going to apply to both sides of the y-axis, so that x can be positive over there or negative over there. And there is our final graph. y equals the natural log of the absolute value of 4x. Good times. All right, and with that, we're going to enter into two more examples now where we're going to deal with expanding natural logarithms, or in other cases, compressing natural logarithms. This is all analytically. Uh, we're not going to use any graphs on this, but let's go ahead and take a look now. So in example C, uh, we're instructed to expand the logarithm that we're given right here uh, to natural log of the quantity ZE square root of quantity X over Y. This looks like a giant mess. But if we remember all of our basic logarithm properties, uh, this can be written out actually in not too bad of a way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the 2 in the natural log, uh, but I'm going to split the z, and I'm going to split the e. Since they're multiplied, we have a product, we actually add those. And then we have uh, another product here, the square root of x over y. So let's do 2 times the natural log. I'm going to call this x over y to the 1 half power. And the reason I'm going to do that is because in my next step, uh, when I simplify these a little bit further, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these coefficients and turn them into exponents. So this will actually turn into the natural log of z squared. This right here, I don't need to turn this into the uh, natural log of e squared, because what is the natural log of e? Of course, remember from the graphs, the natural log of e is actually just 1. And so 2 times 1, this entire expression right here is just 2. And finally, if I take this exponent and bring it down, Notice that the uh, 1 half exponent and the 2 coefficient are essentially going to cancel. And look what I'm left with. This is the natural log of x, because the x is on top, and minus the natural log of y, because y is on bottom. And so here is my uh, completely written out version of this logarithm. It's a mess. Uh, perhaps it's easier than the original, perhaps not. Um, but the important thing is that you can match up the expansion to one of the choices if this were a multiple choice test. So that's how this all works out. Let's take a look at one more example, example D, where we'll take something real nasty like this and combine it into something nice like this. Fun and exciting. And now on our second rewrite the logarithm example, uh, we have this big nasty thing that we want to write as a single logarithm. That means one natural log, and then all this crap that comes after it. So how are we going to do this? Well, let's keep the two on the outside for now and see what we can do inside these brackets. We have the natural log. Uh, all three of these, in fact, have natural logs. So any of them that are positive will go into the numerator. Uh, that seems to be just the x. And any of them that are negative, that's... Uh, the second term right here and the third term right here, those will both go in the denominator. So there's my x plus 1, and there is my x minus 1. And so there I've combined everything in those brackets together. Uh, in fact, hopefully you notice that I can actually simplify this a little bit. I can call this x over x squared minus 1 if I just uh, multiply those together. And now for my last and final coup de grace, let me take this coefficient right here and turn it into an exponent. Uh, the way this is going to look, the natural log of x over x squared minus 1 quantity squared. And so there is our uh, final simplified version of this logarithm. But be aware, if you were given this as a problem, you would be more than expected to be able to come up with this as your expansion. Logarithms go both ways, so be ready for it. And with all that, let's actually take a look at some calculus. After all, this is a calculus course. So we're going to spend the rest of this lesson differentiating natural log functions. Before we get to that, let's take a look at how this is done. These are the derivatives of the natural log. So I will make the argument that differentiating the natural log function is one of the easiest differentiations to do. 
Uh, you're probably expecting something real long and difficult, a, a complicated formula perhaps. But let me surprise you. The derivative of natural log of x is simply 1 divided by x. That's it. That's all. Um, of course, we could make the restriction that this applies when x is positive, simply because x can't be negative for the natural log, nor can it be 0. Um, but it, we usually leave that out, and we'll get more to that later uh, when we get to uh, integrating this thing. Anyway, let's say we wanted to differentiate the natural log of some function. Rather than just natural log of x, this would be the natural log of u, where u represents whatever function of x. Well, again, it's very easy. We're just going to have 1 over the function u. And then, of course, we need to multiply that, because of the chain rule, by the derivative of u. A lot of times this is actually written as du over u. Uh, but get used to seeing it both ways, because both are very, very common. And with that, let's take a look at some examples of uh, why you would want to know how to differentiate the natural log. Here we go with the last three examples of this lesson. In example E, I'm throwing you a little curveball here. We're not just differentiating y equals natural log of x. Oh, no. We already know how to do that. That's too easy. We're going to differentiate y equals the natural log of the natural log of x. So how should we do this? Well, I'm going to um, encourage you to make a u substitution here, since we do have an inside function. And let's call u the natural log of x. If we do that, uh, we see that du would simply be 1 over x. So, well, let's see how this all works out. Uh, if I replace that natural log of x on the inside with just u, I get y equals natural log of u. And if I want to differentiate this with respect to x, let's say, uh, what's going to happen is I'll have dy dx on the left, and on the right I will have 1 over u multiplied by du. So what is that going to look like? Well, 1 over u, here's u, it's natural log of x. This is just 1 over natural log of x. And then the du, as we have written up here, is 1 over x. So... Finally, our derivative of the natural log of the natural log of x is actually just going to be 1 over x natural log of x. So there you go. It seems like a lot of work, but consider making u substitutions on these because quite often there will be an inside part to that natural log, and that can be the u. So there we go. Uh, let's take a look at one more example where the u is a little bit uglier and see how it works out. Here we go, example F. So as always, let me encourage you to pause this video and try example F before we do it together here. Uh, hopefully you get a pretty decently okay answer at the end. If you're not sure how to start, again, consider looking at a U substitution. So in this particular case, U could be X plus the square root of four plus X squared, and then, of course, you can find your du to match that. That would simply be a 1 plus, well, let's see here, this would be 1 half multiplied by the quantity 4x squared to the negative 1 half. And, of course, don't forget your chain rule. That's the 2x. Could we simplify this a bit? I'm going to argue that, yes, absolutely we can. Um, it looks to me like this 2 and this 1 half could cancel out. And so what we could get is uh, 1 plus x over the square root of 4 plus x squared. However, I'm going to argue we could simplify this even more. Now, none of this is necessary, but it will be important at the end for simplification purposes. Uh, rather than having 1, I could call my 1 the square root of 4 plus x squared divided by the square root of 4 plus x squared. If I do that, this is what I'm going to get for my total simplification. Uh, let's see, that would be accounting for my 1. So here we go. They'll have a common denominator now. And there's my 1, and then, of course, I just need to add my x. And so there is my du. Is it ugly? Well, uh, at least it's all together in one piece. So, yeah, it might be ugly, but at least it's going to work for us. There is our u, and there is our du. And now that we have that, let's go ahead and throw all of this stuff together. If we want to differentiate this, uh, f prime of x, let's call that, is actually going to be the natural log of u. 
or rather, that's just f of x is going to be the natural log of u. If I want to differentiate it now, f prime of x will be 1 over u multiplied by du. So that can't be too bad. Let's see how this is going to look. Uh, the 1 over u, 1 over what is u? Of course, that's up here. That's x plus the square root of 4 plus x squared. And I'll multiply that by du, which is this big ugly thing right here. Uh, that's the square root of 4 plus x squared plus x. That sounds familiar. That sounds very familiar. In fact, it looks like I'm going to be able to do a little bit of simplifying here. The numerator of this and the denominator of this are the same, so I can cancel those out. And my final derivative of the natural log of all this garbage in here is actually just 1 over the square root of 4 plus x squared. So because I simplified du early on, that made a lot of my work later very, very easy. Now, if this were a free response question, of course, you wouldn't have to simplify. You could just leave it all written out, and it would be fine. But more than likely, this would be a multiple-choice question, and you would have to find the answer that uh, corresponds with the answers they give. This is probably what that answer would be. So get used to simplifying when you have to, uh, but don't put any more effort into it than you really, really, really need to, especially if it's just a multiple-choice question. Anyway, all that being said, uh, let's take a look at one last problem, example G. It looks like it should be really easy. Uh, if you try it by hand, it's very hard, but if we try it using logarithms, it's not too bad. Here we go, last example. Now, in example G, we're given this uh, rather nasty rational function. Uh, you can see that both the numerator and the denominator are composed of two binomial factors each. And so if we want to do the derivative of this nasty thing, it's going to be a very, very, very ugly quotient rule. Now, your first thought might be, well, I can go ahead and expand both of these. Uh, looks like what I'll get is y equals x squared plus 3x plus 2 divided by x squared minus 3x plus 2. And you can go ahead and differentiate that if you like. Again, it's going to be a real nasty quotient rule. And uh, quite honestly, I would just rather not bother. The way that we use logarithmic differentiation is by simply taking the natural log of both sides of the equation. Uh, of course, here the equation being y equals, and then all this garbage over here. If we do take the natural log of both sides, of course, on the left, we just have natural log of y. But watch what's going to happen on the right side. We'll have the natural log of x plus 1. We'll add that to the natural log of x plus 2. There's our numerator. Then we'll have minus the natural log of both of the denominator binomials. That's x minus 1, and then minus the natural log of x minus 2. And so there we go. We've natural logged both sides. We haven't changed any values because we did the same thing to both sides. It just enabled us to write the right side out as a series of natural logarithms. Well, if I want to go ahead and differentiate this entire big ridiculous thing now, uh, let's see, this is differentiating with respect to x, what I'll get on the left side, uh, let's see, when I differentiate natural log, of course, that's just 1 over the function multiplied by the uh, dy because of the chain rule, of course. Now, on the right side, what's going to happen? Well, the derivative of the natural log of x plus 1 is just 1 over x plus 1. And uh, the natural log of x plus 2, once again, is just 1 over x plus 2. Uh, these other two aren't really going to be much different, except they'll just have uh, minus signs with them. So we have this, and finally, 1 over x minus 2. Now, just for brevity's sake, I am going to go ahead and throw a dx on the end of this, just because I differentiated x, so why not? All right. Well, uh, it did want me to find dy dx. And so how can I get this to say dy dx? And, of course, all I need to do is divide by dx. Now, that will give me dy dx. But now I have this 1 over y thing. And how am I going to get rid of that? Again, quite simply, I'll just multiply both sides by y. That will cancel this fraction and put a y over here. Now, am I allowed to have a y over here, or does this have to be a function of x? I am differentiating with respect to x, 
So, in a way, I would like it to be as X-y as possible. So, this really is not very difficult to do. I know what Y equals. And because I know what Y equals, all I really need to do is replace that Y. Do you know what Y equals? If not, go back and read the original problem. It's written down for you very, very nicely right there. Uh, and certainly, Y is just equal to uh, X plus 1 multiplied by X plus 2 divided by x minus 1 multiplied by x minus 2. Now, if you want to, you can go ahead and distribute this nasty thing to each one of these parts, and you can simplify and you can work it all out, and uh, hopefully you come up with something real nice. As for me, I'm going to stop right here. I have dy dx on the left, and whatever I have on the right is all in terms of x, so I'm happy. This is good. All right, so here in lesson 5.1, uh, we began talking about uh, the calculus of the natural log function. You might be wondering, what happened to the regular logarithm? You remember that log base 10? Well, it's coming up. Never fear. It is coming up. But uh, as it ends up, the natural log is actually quite easier to deal with, both when you're dealing with uh, regular properties and graphs, and especially when you're dealing with calculus of it all. So uh, this entire lesson focused on the natural log. We looked at some properties of the natural log, which, of course, match the properties of standard logarithms, base 10. Uh, after looking at properties, we went through and uh, dissected a few of their graphs and looked at how we can transform natural log graphs in all kinds of different ways, including uh, scalar multipliers and vertical shifts and even absolute values. That was awesome. And after we looked at graphing, we went ahead and expanded and compressed natural logs. Quite honestly, you probably did that back in Algebra 2. But now we have a little bit more practice with it, and now it's fresh. So that's good stuff. And then we concluded this lesson by looking at the derivative of the natural log. Quite arguably, one of the uh, more easy derivatives that there are for us to handle. So uh, all this being done, uh, your assignment is just going to focus on practicing these skills. So as always, good luck.